you all for coming to Paintings to Poems. I hope you had enough time to unleash your creativity. If not, it's just part of the fun. Um, so I think what we'll do is just we'll go ahead and get started with the open mic. So if there's anybody that is dying to go first. Perfect. I am. Okay, where is your piece of art? Uh, one of them is right there. Perfect. We're going to leave that on the wall. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> the others are up around. I did several. Oh. Because I did haiku, so I... Oh, right. Do you want... We can... I mean... No, I just read them. And okay. And then it'll be like a scavenger hunt where you yes, all have yes. to go and try and find the piece of art that... Yeah. Good yes. Day. There we go. Thanks. <laughs> uh, that's... Fisher 7, and I wrote two haiku for it. Fractured reflections, window on a dark rose lake, moment of stillness. And the second one is arrested motion, night waves cut into pieces, calm within the storm. And there's another one called dark desk chairs, which is a little bitty thing on the stairs, okay. to the best chair. It's ready to relax. It's been a long, sweet life. You're still with me. Aww. And then there's a mask in one of those rooms over there. <laughs> it's kind of green, and raccoon. Yeah, it's a raccoon. It's called yeah. Mask Raccoon. Do you still care enough to stand and to wait for us? Please tell me you are. And then um, that scarf, that green one. This one? Yeah. Rivers and nebula, soft light on a summer night. I catch the scent of mint. That's very nice. nice. Thank you. Oh, also. Um, Promotion tomorrow as part of a fundraiser for uh, adult programming at the library like this one. Um, Mike and Bruce and Bob and Lucy. You've all seen them before if you may not remember who exactly they are. But we well, they will be inside the Ransom yeah, Tasting Room on 3rd Street during the um, third Friday on 3rd Street Art and Wine Walk that's happening tomorrow. <laughs> Um, so you can wander by, give them any topic, any topic, any topic, any topic, <laughs> um, and then wander away and they will write a custom poem just for you for a small fee that will go back to library programming. So if you are wandering around 3rd Street tomorrow, please stop by and say hello. And Where are you? It's Ransom. at Ransom, Ransom. Right next to Nick's, you know where Nick's is? Mm -hmm. uh, Ransom and... Pellegrino's daughters. Yeah, oh, yeah. yes. Uh, it's, it's so right. Oh, yeah, they will be there. And the Art and Wine Walk is a cool event no matter what, and it's going to be extra cool tomorrow. And continuing? Yeah, guys? I think yeah. we'll be doing as long as people want to keep doing it. Yes. Yeah. So, end of commercial break. <laughs> um, who would like to read next? Okay. Yay! Okay. And then your for B. This is called Making Honey. Mmm, I should take this nectar back to the hive, but just another sip. Mmm, smells so flowery, so warm and sunny. Mmm, I feel sleepy. <laughs> just a little snooze. Bzz, bzz, bzz. I had a dream. I was taking the nectar back to the hive. But then, there's been a run on orange nectar this summer. Just one sip more. Oh my goddess, how did it get so dark? I'm so late. Hmm, it's so sweet sleeping in the blossoms. Bzz, bzz, bzz. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Um. Also, additionally, if you would, uh, at the before you leave tonight or at some point later in time if you could bring any poems that you wrote 
Um, if you could get us a copy of those, and we will happily post them next to the piece of art that you chose, so anyone who comes and browses the gallery will see your poem with the piece of art. And so, um, the it's artists love it. They're so impressed with all the poems that have been written so far. So yeah, the yeah. artists alone love it. Yeah. Yes, and whoever buys the piece of art also gets to take the poem home with them. So it's just an extra special. So. You don't have to turn them in at the end of tonight if you don't want to, if, but um, either way, nancy at tenoaksgallery.com. You can email them to Nancy and she'll get them printed out and put around. So, I had a commercial, that was a PSA. <laughs> I think I'm done, but uh, who would like to read next? Okay, well, you made eye contact, it's, it's done. You look like you needed me to say that. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, my poem is about uh, Low Minor Creek. Upstairs there's a series of four pictures and they're in seasonal uh, form with all the colors. Oh, there they are. <laughs> yeah, miniature. We have the portable yeah, so, version here. You know, I have intimate knowledge of this creek. And so what, that's what I wrote about. Okay, so, and uh, you know, I, my poem's a little uh, discombobulated because I, I didn't have time necessarily to figure it all out, but let's put it together. Okay, um, it's called Wall Mine and Creek in 96. Um, the pictures of Wall Mine and Creek in all its candid splendor, hanging in the gallery, Meandering along as lazy and carefree as can be imagined, portray her as the demure mistress that is desired by all creatures. She is told which way to flow by rocks and wood stumps and clumps of bushes, held in check by dirt and clay, a sanctuary for most creatures. But I've known Wilmina Creek in times when she reared up and flared her nostrils turning to a roiling, uncontrollable liquid beast that feasted on so many streams and rivulets, all with their own bank-busting attitude. Striking fear into those who inhabit lands connected and are dependent on her for any reason. That's the end. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <laughs> well, that's what I love! It's Impromptu poetry. <laughs> also, for the record, these cards are available for purchase. <laughs> Somebody else. Oh, no, that's fine. You go. I didn't. No, there was an unspoken communication that was happening over there. I volunteered. Thanks. Will you have So this is an oil painting by uh, Gail Bedamonte. Okay. The title of the painting is The Oaks at Montenor. And... Uh, <clears throat> I looked at this painting and I thought it was uh, the time of year was approximately now, and I thought uh, about what's coming in the um, fireplace season around, right around the corner. And so, here's the poem. I miss those sparkles of light and dew from the blade, waiting for rain to wash dust from grass blades. When your truck rumbled close, I was never afraid, it seemed familiar to me, it came to rest in my shade. But the faint smell of smoke raised my concern. If you came here to cut, then I could get burned. Over many seasons, a few cautions I learned. The ground shook a few times. Would today be my turn? <laughs> You can get one tomorrow on Third Friday on Third Street. 
I don't, I'm so afraid to touch the art. I... <laughs> Okay. Which one did you get? The first uh, one. Okay. This one actually is my secondary poem. There you go. There you go. Okay, so this was a quick off secondary poem. The other poem I'm going to read, I've been thinking about because I love that painting. This is beautiful painting. Right here. This painting is called All She, um, All she Needed Was a Cup of Tea. All she needed was a cup of tea, or did she need an akaroo? An akaroo would curl up in front of the pillows, stretch out on the ottoman, claw the hanging on the wall, chase his sister round the room, jump from the ledge, play with the books, nibble the plants, climb the bricks. And as he lay once again asleep on the pillows, Oblivious to the destruction left in his wake, she will need a cup of tea. Better make it Valerian. <laughs> okay. I love this painting. We came to the opening for this artist, and I just, I love that painting. And, uh, I, I thought of my niece, you know, she's youthful, she's 28, I think, and she just passed the bar. So she's very excited about life, and she has her first serious boyfriend, whom grandma does not like. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, I thought, oh, I wanted her to have that pain. It's called Kissing Couple. Still, I wear high heels short skirts. Still, it makes you smile. The white I see in your eyebrows betrays the youthful glow shining through your eyes, emanating from your heart. What a lovely gift for our niece, I commented, enchanted by the depiction of youthful romance. She will wear the heels, the skirt. The world will see her beauty easy to spot in the glow of youth, but still you. You will look at me in the heels, the skirt, and you will see a kind of beauty that passers-by won't see. You will see a kind of beauty that can only be seen through the eyes of devotion. Will we grow old together? Your youthful poem asked. I watched as a braceleted hand pushed a lock of hair from a long flowing mullet of blonde. A young poet gazed away to a far off land in the future, a land where we now live, growing old together. And I gazed back at Whitney's kissing couple for our niece. I wish the love that I find in the hazel eyes below the white eyebrows. May she be blessed to gaze back one day and discover the gift of a lifetime of the love of devotion. So, thank you. Thank you. Hello, how's it which one? Um, that one. one, yeah. But I think they were leaving the glass on the wall. All right, and then this. Yeah, one it's just going to hold that one. We'll put okay. this one up so you can do either or. Okay. Oh, uh, I guess I'll start with that one first. Sure. sure. Yeah, that's right. This one's actually. Um, this one's called, the poem's called Unread Masterpieces. This uh, a painting is called Searching for Answers. The perfect Saturday beckons, peace and wine. Unread masterpieces called from the edges. Finally, a rainy day of demandless tranquility emerges and I rise to turn off my smartphone and connect to life. The voices of tomes to be heard in a rare moment of stillness carved from my rat race life.
Easter. It's called the halt of the hummingbird. A frozen moment of dazzling speed cements itself in my mind's eye. Nature's most delicate, finely tuned creation pauses mid-flight to look me in the eye. Searching my soul for motive, he hesitates. The nectar-filled scarlet bloom within his darting reach. In the briefest of, cap of encounters, we exchange intentions. He to feed, I to observe the pinpoint accuracy of his frantic flight. He dips, feeds, and darts away. I sigh, one glorious memory moment richer. I return to everyday life. Mm. So my mom grew up in the East Coast, and she grew up in a small um, town called Marblehead, and it's got a lighthouse, and I've been there, and it's very beautiful, and it has one of the most beautiful sunsets. And so I heard a lot of stories about her growing up there. So. Um, I tried to imagine you at 16, biking next to the lighthouse, only orange and red to be seen. Maybe this is why your favorite color is red. All your favorite memories tied to this lighthouse instead. Instead of letting me see you cry, you literally fly by just to say hi. High in the sky, a strong pillar in my life, always shining lights. Maybe you became the lighthouse overnight. With so many waves crashing against you, all you can do is stand still and see the sunset sky. And I wonder if you think your light is still needed by. By the time I was 16, my favorite color was purple. Purple bashing red, all surrounding the lighthouse instead. I only get to hear your memories of you biking by the lighthouse. Lighthouse always within you. Yeah, I did. I try not to play favorites, so this one poems from my dad. <laughs> the first road trip I ever did was with my father. We drove for hours and hours, and finally, over the last hill, we reached the land of retirement. Surrounded by lilacs and trees and an old mill, mountains surrounding these lands, only kind of far away. I don't think I ever really appreciated the view. If I only knew this land wouldn't belong to him for much longer. And I wonder if that's the only road trip I'll ever do with him. If he remembers it like I do. The lilacs, the trees, and the mountains that seem so far away from me. Okay, I did the same piece. It's a little different. It's not the same as her poem, but um, do you hear that? That sound so unfamiliar? I think to myself for just a moment. My senses are changing. I can almost hear this valley of lavender. It calls to me. It's calling home. So unfamiliar, I ask myself, is this home I've been searching for? As I stand here, I see the big mountain with the structure and stability of a home. Now all at once, my senses are coming together. I can see my home. I can hear the peace. I can feel the lavender brush against me as I run. I'm running closer and closer. I'm running to my home. Okay, this is an introspection by Jim Richards. And I did, okay. As I sit here, I look at myself. As I sit here, I reflect. Reflect on what, I ask myself. As I sit here, I realize. Realize what, I ask myself. I realize I have clarity. As I sit here, I see the clarity. The path I cannot see is clear now. When I sit here, I am at peace. The peace I now reflect on. Anybody else in there? If I have one more here. Oh my gosh, I forgot! Uh, Which one would you do, Carol? Is there yeah, someone yeah. to run the camera? Yeah. Bruce, you're on it. I try. Oh, the Viking. Yeah. Okay. 
So this piece is in this display over here with all these different jars and Nancy was saying a lot of people are buying these for ashes for their loved one. And I thought, well that's interesting because when I look at it, I'm a big fan of Viking poetry. And we think of Viking as a noun, but to the Norsemen, no a Viking. It was, you know, something that they, you know, went they went to visit people. <laughs> <laughs> With some energy. With lots of, you know, very, kind of like Avon lady, but a little bit more advanced than that. So, so in the Orkney Inga saga, this is the story of how they left Scandinavia, came down past the Faroe Islands and Britain and France, Spain, they came up the Mediterranean, they ended up at the Isle of Acre, which is now a peninsula off of what we now know as Israel. Then they came up from there through the Baltic and through the land of what they call the Rus, R-U-S, came down the Danube through the Celts and then went back across into the Scandinavia. Now in the story of the Orkneyinga saga, when they get to the Isle of Acre, they're stranded there for a while and their bard dies. And there's this very grievous part of this poem where they are grieving for the loss of their bard because to them, the poets, the bards, sang your life song. You were preserved forever because your story was sung. And the word rhapsody comes from the Greek word rhapsod, because it's a rhapsodic language, and in Greek you sing Greek. And so these are the people inspired to sing what they are perceiving, what they're inspired by. So when I saw this, it made me think of the Orkneyinga saga. So this piece is called Song of the Ashes and Bone. Oh, and uh, the little ship there, they would call those, those long ships were called goat skippers because they were built low and shallow so that they would just sort of skip over the waves. That's why they were able to sail them on the sea and then also kind of go up rivers and do inland biking. Goat skipper, bearer of souls, lives sung as the saga unfolds. Hull skimming the white crowned devourer, source of all light, keeper of the dead. Atop the womb of fired clay, woven cross-hatched knot, tattoo of green on white, sea foam on bone. Brothers returning from a Viking, under watch of the Norns, under oath to the Allfather, under wing of Valkyrie. Pharaoh to Cairo, Acre to Baltic, up the Danube, to cross the land of the Celts and the Rus. Home, again, for now. Our bard has settled soft his dust against the curves of this pot, shaped by hands, led by the fates. What once was clay, now a song of ashes and bone. Our singer of lives has come home. Thank you. Is there, was there anyone else? How are the upcoming events here? Oh, why thank you. Um, great, thanks everybody for coming. So tomorrow, 3rd Street, on 3rd, Ransom Tasting Room, please stop by and uh, request a poem. I'm really excited for that. What's the time? The time again? Four uh, to from four to eight, but probably between five and seven. Yeah, the rush hour will be five to seven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So be prepared. Yes. So be prepared to like fight somebody. Yeah, absolutely. Like, kind of be... uh, <laughs> just kidding. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, so, well, that's happening tomorrow. We have uh, an October 4th, which is the first Thursday. We have a um, our regular poetry night at Gallery at Ten Oaks. I don't, I don't know why I added that since you're all here. It's fine. <laughs> We've all been drinking. You better say that. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then um, October 27th at the library, we are having a um, kickoff to NaNoWriMo, which is November is National Novel Writing Month. Um, and so we will be having a workshop from Maggie Stuckey, who has come to the library a few times before, but she will be talking about um, 
nonfiction book proposals and how um, just pretty much everything that you would need to know. Um, for the record, in library land, poetry is nonfiction. Just saying. 811. It's there. Um, Dewey Decimal. Yes, it was the Dewey Decimal System. I can't tell you Library of Congress. I have no idea. But and that, that's it. Thank you. Do we have any? Do we have any exciting events that are happening here? Um, the McMinnville Short Film Festival is hosting an event on October 18th. It's a documentary about um, animal rescue teams. It's a fundraiser for homeward bound pets. It's free to everyone at the McMinnville Cinema, 6.30, October 18th, they, there is a suggested $10 donation that you'll learn about Homeward Bound Pets. The filmmaker will be there to talk to you. Um, we'll talk to you about the film festival, but mark it, Thursday, October 18th. Hope to see you there. Thanks. Okay, well. We have a slide YouTube for you. Yeah. Nancy, or you can drop them by the library. We can photocopy too. We can photocopy them here too, but thank you all so much for coming and we'll see you again soon.